They can all burn. Everyone betrays us, Jinx. Recently, my friend Peter introduced me to the League of Legends anime Arcane, and now we have Season 2 coming out, so because I just finished Season 1, I wanted to kind of predict what I think is going to happen in the upcoming season. Now, if you guys like Arcane content, you can check out my Harley Quinnification of Jinx video, as well as you can hit that like and subscribe button because it always helps out the content. And besides that, guys, let's get into Arcane and what is next. So in order to know what's coming next, we have to discuss a little bit about what happened at the end of season one of Arcane. If you haven't seen it, I am giving you a spoiler alert here. Go give it a watch. It's really good. It was dropped initially in three acts. It's three episodes per act. And honestly, I personally watched it in that way, one act then the next. And I do think that that is a great way to go about it. And I like how Netflix did that release schedule. And it looks like we hopefully should be getting that again. So let's go ahead and put together what exactly happened at the end of Arcane season one so we can move on to season two. Ultimately, what we saw in season one was we really were getting the backstory of Jinx and how she becomes the overall kind of villain in this world. And ultimately, we see this kind of uh, scuffle between the above grounders and the undergrounders. And the undergrounders want to get their own nation and they want to be able to govern themselves because they're tired of being taken advantage of by the people at the top. One of the people leading this move was Silco, who was basically a de facto father figure for Jinx because at the end of act one I believe it was she basically uh, is a young girl and her father figure dies and it's kind of her own fault and ultimately then uh, her sister slaps her walks away gets like drugged and and put away in some prison uh, but essentially Jinx just thinks she has been abandoned and that drives her directly into Silco's arms making her a kind of dangerous person in this world because she also is extremely psychotic she does chaos things all the time you really can never predict what's gonna happen next and at the height of the end of season one we basically see that Jinx is trying to figure out who she is whether she is powder or she's gonna be Jinx whether her sister can try to bring her back in a certain type of way and whether or not she's gonna choose to go with her de facto father figure or if she's going to go with her sister what we see is she has some psychotic breaks and it leads her to accidentally killing Silco. Now, part of it is accidentally, but part of it, I'm sure, is something that she intended to do, as she did tie him up and bring him here, and he had kind of betrayed her, although we get this really interesting moment where I don't know if Silco was being honest or not, but Silco basically comes out and says to Jinx, like, no, I would have never given you to these other people, because they basically got this kind of um, agreement that basically, if they give over Jinx, they can have their whole nation of Zon and govern themselves. And so Jinx basically hears Silco planning this out and you know talking about how she might give over or how he might give over Jinx in order to get this and that's when Jinx kind of you know takes him and, and we get into this whole situation where she's trying to figure everything out and she ends up killing Silco but back to my point the reason I say all this is because Silco has this moment where he tries to connect with Jinx as he dies saying I would have never given you over to them and I would have always fought to keep you by my side you're my daughter and I love you and ultimately Silco should have known he was dying now there's two options here one he was telling the truth which I kind of do bend towards because while Silco is an evil person he definitely seemed to have an emotional conflict specifically for Jinx and not really for anybody else and so due to this to me I kind of bend towards that direction that he wasn't going to give her up but there is also the other option that he was lying and if so this basically does put Jinx in a certain psychological state that of course is probably worse than previously because she has been fulfilling her need for a father father figure through Silco, and that kind of replaced her initial father figure in Vander, and so at this point, what it really seems is now she has once again lost that father figure, and we're going to see her just continue to spiral, and I really don't think, obviously, like Vi and, and Jinx can work together, considering how insane Jinx is and the level of depravity she's going to, and especially, you know, after Jinx attacks the above grounders, or I, I'm sorry if that's not exactly what they're called, but once she does that, it's going to start an all-out war, and that is what we were trying to avoid with Silco, you know, potentially giving up Jinx to avoid that. Now, obviously, the big thing that happened at the end of Arcane Season 1 is Jinx sets off this missile that goes up towards uh, Mel and the rest of the people that are voting on whether or not to give the nation Zon their sovereignty or not. And during this, we don't really see exactly what happens, but it appears that the rocket is going towards Mel. Now, look, Mel is best girl. 
Mel is my favorite character. Mel is so exceedingly hot. And I am extremely jealous of Jace. I'm, je I'm jealous of both of them, to be honest, okay? Jace is a Giga Chad. And Mel is just... Well, I mean, look at her and listen to her, you know? I'm sorry. I'm just going to be kind of upset if she does die. So there's two ways that it can go there. One, somebody jumps in and tries to, like, uh, you know to vend her life by giving up their own that could be jace jumping in and then taking the missile while you know potentially saving mel however mel seems to have a good sensibility about trying to lead without leading towards a war and i do like uh the you know the idea that you know while i love mel her being out of the picture leaves room for her mother to come in and take over and try to you know start this war and go to town if Jace dies, though, that could potentially push her in the direction of going with her mother and saying, no, I agree now, I get it now, war is necessary, and that could be a really fun kind of little point and a little bit of a character arc for her. The other option is she dies and Jace is then left with this idea of like, why was I going to do this? Why was I going to give them what they wanted if it still led to the person that I loved most dying? And that too could lead him towards working with the mother of Mel. Now, generally speaking, I think in this upcoming season, it is going to be Mel's mother versus the Undercity, and I think that that is going to be a big back and forth, and I do think it's going to be interesting to see a, like, really strong arm person come in and say, no, we're just going to crush whatever rebellion is coming, uh, very different from the kind of uh, leading style of Mel and whatnot. And again, I love the philosophical implications of all these things you know making you consider when war is necessary what war looks like what you sometimes give up to avoid war what sometimes you lose even if you do avoid war all of these questions are really fascinating but ultimately to me it makes the most sense that that is where we are going we are going to see either jace or mel die uh, and then whoever lives goes against their previous ways of being anti-war and starts to go with the mother character of mel and then that kind of is the big beef and back and forth between between Jinx and the upper city of like, you know, the mother and whatnot. Now, potentially too, I don't know where Vi is going here. If she goes with, uh, is it like Kaylin or, or whatever her name is? If she goes with her, it could be a situation where we see Vi understands the depravity of Jinx and understands that she's not able to be saved. And then she therefore wants to go ahead and try to help take her down because at this point it's not her sister. Or at the same time, it could continue in the direction where she wants to try to save Jinx. However, rather than being successful in doing so, she fails and maybe at some point realizes that she can. Or maybe she does somehow bring her sister back into a realm of sanity. I think that at this point, Jinx is so far gone that I don't see it making any sense to have her actually, uh, you know, come back and be a normal person or go back to the powder persona. It seems like Jinx is who she is. Jinx is who she is owned. And I I really do like that. I think it's going to be a really interesting season, and I'm excited for Arcane Season 2. What do you guys think is going to happen? Are you excited for Arcane Season 2 like I am? Let me know all that in the comments down below. Besides that, guys, like I said before, like and subscribe. It always helps out the channel, and it helps out the content. And besides that, guys, I will see you all in the next one. Abducted by my brain and it drains all the